Hello, welcome back. The title here is called Understanding Unit Rates, Part 1. I know it doesn't sound so incredibly interesting, but the idea of unit rates is actually really, really important in learning math and also beyond into engineering, because we're really going to be focusing on units here. And so a lot of times when we talk about uh, the easiest example would be velocity or speed, right? Distance traveled per unit of time, kilometers per hour, miles per hour. We're dividing two things. We're comparing how far you travel to how long it takes you to travel. And we have lots of units like that where we divide two numbers essentially. So the idea of a unit rate is taking the overall you know, distance and time that you travel, as an example, and boiling it down to how far do you travel in one hour? How far do you travel in one minute? If we're talking about, uh, let's say, dollars per pound or dollars per kilogram of rice, how, how many dollars do you spend per one kilogram? So you see how every comparison I'm using is per one of something, per one kilogram, per you know, one degree Celsius, per one second and so on. That's why it's called a unit rate, because a unit rate is telling you what is happening per one unit of something. And so it's going to be easier to show as we talk through some of these examples. So the idea of distance traveled in time, right? We, we travel, we start have a starting point, and then we have like an ending point here. And there's a distance that we travel here, a distance. And then of course, we also know that there's time. How far do you travel and how long do you take to, to take that travel, right? So let's take the simplest distance and speed example I can come up with. Rhonda traveled six kilometers in one hour. At what speed was she traveling in kilometers per hour? Now you see here, I actually already made the time interval one hour. So it was really, really simple. You already know, but without doing any math at all, that if she traveled six kilometers in one hour, that's what the problem says, then her speed must be six kilometers per hour because that's what per hour means. It means how far do you go in one hour? But in order to show it mathematically, we need to show the units, right? So the way you do this is if you want to find the unit rate, uh, which is what we're asking, what speed was she traveling? That's a unit rate in kilometers per hour. What we do is we write it down as a gi giant fraction here. So we write down six and then kilometers, we abbreviate that KM, and then we put a division bar, and on the bottom, we write down one hour. So we're attaching the units, and if you recognize this, you remember we've done lots of lessons in the past on unit conversions. How to convert units from you know, kilometers per hour to kilometers per minute or to meters per second or whatever. And the way we do it is we kind of extend this fraction bar and we arrange our units to cancel the units and leave us with what we want. But here, there's nothing to cancel because we're actually not converting any units, but you use the same idea. If you want to go to kilometers per hour, a unit rate, you write the number of kilometers in the top of a fraction bar and the number of hours in the bottom, and you do the division here. We have two numbers to divide. And so what is six divided by one? Six divided by one is six. And the units are already here, kilometers per hour. We can't really divide the units. We have to leave them here. So the unit is kilometers per hour. And so the answer to the question, again, it's an incredibly simple question on purpose because I want to show you the idea of a unit rate uh, with the easiest example I can think of. If somebody travels six kilometers in one hour, we take the six kilometers, we divide by the one hour, and we get a unit rate that's telling us six kilometers per hour. So this means that you now know, since you know the unit rate, that after one hour, she travels six kilometers. After the next hour, the second hour, she travels another six kilometers because it's six kilometers per hour, every single hour, six more kilometers. So you know, for instance, after three hours of travel, how far is she going to go? Well, let's figure that out real quick. You may not even know the equation for that, but from unit point of view, we have learned a long time ago how to use these unit rates. So let's take six kilometers per, you draw a long line here, per hour. And let's say I tell you that this person travels six kilometers per hour for three hours. How far do they go? Well, you basically want to use this to convert to kilometers. And you know that they go three hours, and so you put the three hours up here, and why do they have to go up there? Because the only way to cancel units from our unit conversion lessons we've done in the past is to have a same unit on the top and the bottom, and then they cancel. Think about you know anything we've been doing, cross-canceling of fractions, we cancel something on the top and the bottom. 
or just uh, any fraction. Three divided by three is one. You know, four divided by four is one. Well, here we have hours divided by hours, that's one, and so it disappears. So we arrange the unit like this so that the hours will disappear and all that we will have left is kilometers. And so we have the unit of kilometers left, but we still have these numbers. Anything on the top gets multiplied and we divide by any numbers on the bottom. Of course, we don't have anything here. So six times three is 18 and the hours are gone, kilometers is left. So the bottom line is, if I tell you somebody is traveling six kilometers per hour for three hours, then you take that unit rate and you multiply by three and it tells you they travel eight kilom 18 kilometers. And that makes sense because after the first hour, they travel six kilometers. After the second hour, six more. And after the third hour, six more. And six plus six plus six is the same thing as six times three, which is 18. Now that's a really easy concept for us to wrap our brain around. That's why I picked it. But the idea is you can use units even if you're not totally sure what to do because this has a kilometers on the top and an hours on the bottom. The only way to get distance from our answer is to arrange it so the hours are on the top and the bottom. So I know that I must multiply by three hours. I know that I can't divide by hours because if I put hours down here, nothing would cancel. I have to have something in the top and the bottom. Okay. Another example of how to kind of use these uh, unit rates like this, like a practical example. Let's say I want to take six kilometers per hour and I want to convert to kilometers per minute. What if I just tell you someone travels six kilometers per hour, how many kilo, uh, what is their speed in kilometers per minute? So how do you figure this out? You're like, well, I'm not sure what to do. Well, you just write down your unit kilometers per hour, draw a line. Now you need a unit conversion from hours to minutes. And we know that one hour, is the same thing as 60 minutes. So we have to write it like this because putting the hours on the top uh, here means that it will cancel with the hours on the bottom. And I will have minutes on the bottom and kilometers on the top. So my new unit, my new unit is gonna be kilometers per minute, which is what I just asked you to, to, to convert, right? Now I have six times one Anything on the top gets multiplied and I'm dividing by 60. So I have six divided by 60. So I have six divided by 60, right? Now this is a fraction. I can divide the top and bottom by six. So six divided by six is one and 60 divided by six is 10. So one tenth and the answer kilometers per minute. And if you think about dividing one divided by 10, move the decimal, that's the same thing as 0 0.1 kilometers per minute. Does this make sense? If somebody is traveling six kilometers every hour, then in a much uh, smaller amount of time, in a minute, they're gonna travel a fraction of a kilometer, 0.1 kilometers in that case, per minute, right? So this was kind of like a first problem, getting our, our feet wet with unit rates. A unit rate, the easiest way to think about it is speed because velocity is distance per time. So it's meters per second or meters per minute or kilometers per hour. But in every one of those cases, it's distance per one hour, per one minute. In this case, it was per one hour. We converted to per one minute because when we divide these numbers, we get a unit rate. Again, this is a unit rate. It is 0.1 kilometers per one minute. Every minute that goes by, I go another 0.1 kilometers. That's exactly the same speed as going uh, six kilometers in every hour. Why? Because there's so many minutes in an hour, you go much farther, much farther. And then of course we re review the idea of converting units in this case, uh, or not converting units, but using unit rates and other calculations. If I travel for three hours and so on, I can cancel the units and figure out how far I go. So that was kind of a long winded example one, but the idea is to review and tell you what unit rates are, but also to tell you what they're for. A unit rate is comparing something to one or one of something happening in the bottom, in the denominator. Let's take another example, something completely different. Jacob purchased eight pens for $16. What rate did he pay in dollars per pen? Dollars per pen. So if you buy a box of pens off the internet or off out of a store, it's gonna cost so much money for a whole box. But we wanna know the unit rate cost for one of those pens inside. So we have to divide the cost of the whole box divided by the number of total pins in the box, because in this case, it's $16 for the entire box. But in the box wasn't just one pin, it was actually eight pins. 
And much like our unit conversions, you see where our units canceled when we multiplied or when we tried to convert units, we cancel units. We write our units down, $16 per, means division, eight pens. $16 per eight pens. But there's no cancellation of units. So all you get is the division, 16 divided by eight. Remember, anything on the top divided by what's on the bottom is two, and it's dollars per pen. When you put a little slash like that, it's like a, a, a per. You, re, you read it in words as per, so dollars per pen. Does this make sense? Does it make sense that it would be two dollars per pen? Well, the first pen's two dollars, the second pen's two more dollars, the third pen's two more dollars. If you actually had eight pens, which is what we have, then two times eight is 16 total dollars. So the total cost is 16 dollars. The total number of pens is uh, eight of them, but the unit cost, the unit price of a pen, is you're paying two dollars per pen. And that is a really important thing because a lot of times when you're shopping, people can trick you into spending too much money. They'll give you, you know, a, 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 it looks like a cheaper price, but maybe the box that they have for the pens, maybe it has a couple of less pens in there. So really the way to compare two different situations is to find the unit price. How much dollars per pen is in this box and then calculate the dollars per pen for this box and then you're comparing the same things. You're finding out how many dollars each individual pen costs, which is what we call the unit rate. And by comparing them, then you can see which one's actually cheaper because I can play all kinds of games. I can just make the box bigger or smaller and I can make it look cheaper. But in fact, you might be paying more per pen if I'm uh, clever in the way in which I do it. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. It says, Isabel typed 420 words in seven minutes. What is her typing speed in words per minute? Words per minute. So we look at the problem, we typed in 420 words. So we just write that down. And we have put per, which means division symbol, per, how, many, how long did it take us to do this? Seven minutes. Right? There's no units to cancel here, so the units just carry into the answer, and then we divide. 420 divided by 7 turns out to be 60. 6 times 7 is 42, so you know that the answer is 60. It makes sense. Words per minute. Right. So if you're hiring somebody, uh, and this unit rate means 60 words every minute. So one minute goes by, I type 60 words. Another minute goes by, I type 60 more words. It's a unit rate. Just like this is $2 for every pen that I purchase. Why would you care about calculating words per minute? Well, if I'm hiring two people to do a bunch of, of typing for me, then I wanna really see how fast each of them can work. And everybody's different, so I give them a test and I time them over a certain period of time and I calculate the unit rate. So if this person does 60 words per minute and the other person over here does 85 words per minute, then as and I compare both unit rates, then I know that the 85 words per minute person is gonna do a lot more work, a lot, over a, of a typical work day for me, so I may offer them more money if I'm interested in hiring that person. All right, almost done. Let's take a look at problem four. It says, Manuel made eight pitchers of lemonade using six liters of water. What rate of liters of water per pitcher of lemonade did he use? So we're looking for a unit of liters of water per pitcher, liters per pitcher, and the problem says, eight pitchers of lemonade, six liters of water. So we have to put the six liters on top. And on the bottom, we have to put eight pitchers of lemonade. Why do we write it like this instead of upside down? Because the problem says, what is the rate of liters per water per pitchers of lemonade? So we have to have liters per pitchers. It has to be whatever's on top, per or divided by whatever's on the bottom. No, of course, no units cancel. And here we have six divided by eight. So that's, uh, a fraction, so we have six divided by eight, it's liters uh, per pitcher. However, we know that six divided by eight can be simplified. This is a fraction, so we typically want to simplify fractions. Divide by two, divide by two, and six divided by two is three, and you get eight divided by two is four. So the actual unit rate in lowest terms is three-fourths liters per pitcher. What does this mean? Well, think about it. If instead of three-fourths, the answer came out to be one, then it would mean that it was one, if it were one, one liter of water was required to make one pitcher, uh, 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 sorry, yeah, one liter of water would make one pitcher of lemonade, right? But that's not what we got. We got three-fourths. So what it's telling us is it takes three-fourths of a liter of water 
to make a pitcher of lemonade. Three fourths of a liter means a little bit less than a liter of water to make a pitcher of lemonade. And that's the final answer. All right, let's take a look at the last problem. It says Daisy can sew four shirts in eight hours. At what rate can she, sh can, sh can she sew in shirts per hour? That's hard to say. At what rate can she sew in sh shirts per hour? So that's the unit we're looking for, shirts per hour. That's the unit rate, shirts per hour. So we look at the problem. How many shirts did she sew? Four shirts. And how many hours did it take this person? Eight hours. So the unit we're going to get is shirts per hour. And why do you arrange it this way? Why don't you put the eight on top and the four on the bottom? Because the problem says the, the rate we want is shirts per hour. So we have to have shirts that she sewed per hours on the bottom. We have to arrange it that way because that's what we want. So we have four eights. The answer we can write is four eights uh, shirts per hour. However, this is a simple fraction. We can divide top and bottom by four and we'll get one half shirts per hour. Does this make sense? It means that she can do one half of a shirt every hour. So let's think about that. If she can do half of a shirt an hour, after the first hour happens, she's done half of a shirt. After the next hour happens, another half of a shirt ha has, has, has occurred. So really it takes two hours to do one shirt, right? Um, two hours to do one shirt. But then after four hours, we do another shirt, and then another two hours, so six hours, we do a third shirt, and then another two hours, eight hours, we do our fourth shirt. And it tells us in our problem statement, it really did take us eight hours to do four shirts. But the unit rate is the how many shirts did she make in a single hour, one half of a shirt, because it takes her, look at it, it takes her four, over a period of eight hours, she can only do four shirts. If it were different, where she did eight, shir eight shirts in eight hours, then she would do one shirt per hour, but we're only doing half of that, only four shirts are completed, in eight hours, so that works out to half of a shirt per hour. You know, this is kind of a weird lesson in a sense because it kind of comes out of nowhere and a lot of students are like, why do I care about unit rates? That's why in the first problem, I tried to give a little motivation, a little bit, to show you what you can do with rates because it really pops up all the time. You know, the entire concept of calculus, which is a class you learn later on, is all about rates, how things change how speed happens, acceleration. Anytime things change, there's a rate involved, a rate of change. And so this idea of unit rate really ties into advanced math, really. And we never get away from it because in real life, we're always measuring speed or how fast the temperature is changing per second if the temperature is going down. If I launch a spacecraft into space, you know, it's on Earth, so it's hot and it has a lot of fire and stuff and it gets into space, it's gonna cool off immediately, but not immediately, but it's gonna start cooling off right away. What is the rate of cool off? That you would measure that in degrees per second. That's a unit rate. How many degrees does it drop in temperature in space per second? That's a unit rate. These velocities are all unit rates. There's tons of unit rates. I could literally talk for an hour on different ways that we can measure unit rates for different things. Anytime you buy something, dollars per pound, go to the gas pump, dollars per gallon, that's a unit rate. How much are you paying per one gallon? So anytime you're, you're comparing something per one of something, dollars per one gallon, meters per one second, degrees per, per one hour, it's a unit rate. And we use them all the time, even in advanced topics. So practice these, make sure you understand how to get the idea and calculate a unit rate, it's just division. And then follow me on to part two, we'll get a little more practice with unit rates.